S&P 500, which you look at in terms of seasonality and the presidential cycle. What, what, what does that tell us where we're going? It's a fun chart uh, because it's really working well right now. We're in the first year of a presidential term, and we have something we developed years ago called the presidential cycle pattern. Other people have done the same kind of work. And you take the, the S&P 500 data, you chop it up into four-year chunks of time, and you average it together. And it sh this shows you the average pattern of what the stock market typically does. The stock market doesn't always behave exactly according to the pattern. It's, a, it's just a guideline. Right now, we're, acting, we're seeing this market act much stronger than average, which is not a surprise since you got $120 billion a month from the Fed coming into the banking system, you'd, and it's looking for something to do. So we're seeing much more strength, but we're still seeing the little wiggles that happen uh, on a seasonal basis coming along. It's saying that we get a little tiny uh, pause right here, a very tiny, uh, hope, and it's okay if, if it feels worse than just a tiny pause, but the, uh, the big uptrend isn't due to end until mid-July if, if we follow the ideal pattern. Uh, generally speaking, the entire first year uh, from the election to November a, a year later is flat. And so a lot of this will have to get given back this fall if we continue to follow the pattern. But that, of course, depends on what the Fed wants to do. And if they start tapering, it will magnify whatever the, um, the normal tendency is. So the S&P 500 has climbed 24 percent during President Biden's first 100 days in office, making it the best performance for any president since going back to the 1950s. And President Eisenhower, a any concern that that's been pulled forward in terms of the run up in the stock market that would make it break this correlation, this historical correlation? Well, it doesn't really have so much to do with the president as much as, as it has to do with how investors feel related to the election cycle. And, and when you get, have an election, especially of a new president from a different party, there's all sorts of hope that the new guy is going to fix everything and, and it's all going to be wonderful and everything that we worried about before is all, is all going to go away. And, and, when I'm, and so there's euphoria, especially right after the election. But then when the new guy doesn't get everything fixed, uh, then the, the malaise sets in and that's what the latter half of the year is. But we're not yet to the malaise stage. We're still in the uptrending till July phase. And uh, as I mentioned, we're, we're, it's, we're seeing it go much more more strongly than than the average percentage wise but it's still following the dance step so don't don't get too hung up on the percentage magnitude look at what the dance step, so steps are saying because that's where the trading opportunity is Tom uh, you've also been looking uh, at, at Apple uh, ahead of earnings and, and what's your kind of assessment of uh, the, the, the share price where it stands and, and what earnings tends to mean for that one well, the interesting thing about Apple, it has its, its earnings announcement at the end of the first month of every calendar quarter. So uh, in this case, it'll be on Wednesday. And usually, Apple uh, investors celebrate and push the share price up after earnings. It doesn't always work that way. Didn't work that way last quarter, but usually that's what happens. So you have the first month of any calendar quarter. It's generally sideways to up a little bit. You get the big uh, hit after earnings, big big uptrend and the second month of the quarter is the best time on average uh, but your mileage may vary the best time is the second month of the quarter and then the third qu third month of the quarter it goes back to just sideways choppiness again so if you're ever wanting to be an apple investor then most of the time it works to be an, an owner from right before the earnings announcement through the that whole second month of the quarter most of the time it doesn't always work out that way. And in, in fact, the first quarter of this year, it did not work that way. We got a big disappointment after earnings. So uh, your mileage may vary once again, but that's the, the natural tendency. And it's following the pattern really well this time. Or you could just own it and not trade it, as Jim Cramer always says, which has yes. served people well. Tom, you're, you're also looking at the correlation between Bitcoin and the stock market. And, and it does seem like lately the, the whole idea that people are hungry for risk going into Bitcoin and other speculative parts of the market has worked well for stocks. Is that, is that something you see in the charts? Yes, it's something we've been tracking for about two years. We've noticed that the movements of Bitcoin tend to show up again about a week later or five trading days later and the movements of the S&P 500. Now, not the same magnitude. Bitcoin is like the, the tail of the dog and, and the stock market is like the belly button. Bitcoin can wag all over the place, but the the dance steps show up. And so we, we saw a sell-off in, in Bitcoin, quite a scary one last week. Uh, we're, and so we're now in the one week anniversary of that where we should see a little bit of softness for the stock market this week. But we're noticing that Bitcoin has turned back up again from that scary sell off last week. So by the time that the stock market gets to the end of this week, it should start echoing the upturn in Bitcoin. 
uh, don't not in terms of magnitude, but in terms of the direction and the timing. And, it, and I wish it was more uh, more of a perfect correlation than it is. It's not it's not absolutely perfect. It's but it's detectable. It's there. It's a real effect. Uh, whether you can make money from it or not, it depends on how well you can notice the, the slight distinctions and and uh, and a little bit of variation in it. But I'm expecting that the upturn that we've seen from Bitcoin's scary sell-off is going to mean an upturn for stocks after we get past this week, after we get past the Fed announcement. Tom, good to see you. Thanks for joining us. Always good to be with you. We now have uh, the S&P and Dow both uh, slightly positive, of course, anything positive.